Hi, my name is Elizabeth and thanks for stopping by to watch another Rough Draft DIY video. In this one, I'll be showing you how to flip old beat up chairs and turn them from this into this. This is a really, really simple project. You just have to repaint and reupholster. And after I'm done showing you how to do that, I'm going to send you over to my fellow YouTubers channel, Mr. DIY Dork, for a five part series on how to sell flipped furniture on Craigslist. This is actually really inexpensive to do and you can make quite a bit of profit off of it. So let's get started. Flipping chairs is not an uncommon theme in the DIY world, but in this video, I really want to go into depth about what your paint options are, what the best ones are for this project and why you should use them. So to get started, let's take the seats out of these chairs and clean them up. First things first, remove the seat by unscrewing the hardware that attaches it to the frame. Be sure to save that hardware in a safe place because you'll need it again later. And then wipe down the frame with some water and a little soap. Now you're just about ready to paint the chair frames and I want to go over the different paint options to consider for this project. I used to think that paint was just paint, that you went to the store, picked out the size can you wanted, maybe picked out a simple color like green or black. But no, paint is not just paint. It's a lot more complicated than that. There's exterior and interior paint, there's spray paint, there's paint and primer in one, then there's hundreds of colors to choose from with names like sea moss and buttercup. And all of these options come in six different sheens, which I used to think that eggshell was a color. It's, it's not, it's not a color. Not only that, but the cans that these paints come in generally look very similar and the distinguishing features are written on very small parts of the label in different places. So the trick is to find the right combination for your project. And I want to go over these options and leave you with a set of key questions that you can ask yourself for any future project and find the right paint. The first thing we need to ask is paint and primer in one or no primer. Well, what is primer? It's a material that helps paint adhere to a surface that it would otherwise peel off of once it dries. With redoing chairs, we're almost always painting over someone else's work, whether it be paint or varnish. And instead of stripping that old work off, you can simply cover it in primer and it's ready for paint. So yes, you definitely want to apply primer, whether you apply it separately or as a paint and primer in one. Next, we wanna ask ourselves if we wanna use spray paint or regular paint. Spray paint is much faster, but it releases a lot of paint particles and fumes into the air. And if you have a backyard space, I would definitely suggest using spray paint because it's faster. But if all you have is an interior space like me, which is my living room, you have to do it the hard way by hand. Lastly, we have to make sure we buy the right kind of sheen or shininess of paint. And this indication is generally up at the top of the label on the can right here. I've got semi-gloss and here I've got flat. Well, what does that mean? Basically, there's six of them. Matte, flat, eggshell, satin, semi-gloss, and high gloss. With matte being the least shiny and high gloss being the shiniest. Matte and flat have no luster and are used for interior walls and ceilings because they hide imperfections by not reflecting light. They are good for low traffic areas because they pretty much can't be cleaned and they chip very easily. So no good for our chairs. Eggshell is a slight step up on shininess from matte and flat. It's typically used for the walls and children's bedrooms because it can still mask imperfections and, since it has a bit more gloss in it, take a light scrubbing every once in a while. It's a little more durable, but not durable enough for our chairs. Satin is the next glossier step up. It's also used for children's rooms and high traffic areas like door frames because it can handle a cleaning and it's more resistant to mold. Semi-gloss is the shiniest paint you'll use in the inside of your house. You typically notice it on windowsills or areas that are frequently exposed to moisture, like bathrooms. It kind of creates a plastic surface and is resilient to dings and scuffs. Plus, this sheen is super easy to wipe down and clean. The next step up, high gloss, is more for outdoor furniture. So semi-gloss is what we really want for our chairs. So, in conclusion, we want an interior paint, that's easy enough, semi-gloss sheen, with a paint and primer in one, or you could do paint and primer separately. It's up to you. Either option is fine. And as for the size can that you want, this will be excessive for two chairs. You'll have some left over for sure. Half of this would be enough actually. And as for the color, you can have them mix it up right there at the store and we're ready to paint. 
I'll be applying primer and paint separately. One coat of primer and two coats of paint should do the trick. And while the paint dries, we can reupholster the cushions. To reupholster these cushions, you're going to need upholstery fabric or a fabric that's thick enough that it can handle the wear and tear of daily use. And this toile that I'm using actually used to be a tablecloth that my mom found at a garage sale for a dollar. So I'll be getting my money's worth out of these chairs. And if you're not sure if the fabric that you want to use is thick enough for reupholstering, it should kind of feel like denim, like jeans. It should be kind of thick and coarse so that it can handle the wear and tear of daily use. And we're going to use these seat bottoms to cut out the right shape fabric, and then I'll show you how to staple it on. For reupholstering, you'll need a staple gun and staples. I'm using a cheap staple gun that costs less than $15, and staples that are 3 eighths of an inch long. Before stapling, make sure the design of your fabric is running in the right direction so it doesn't end up upside down or lopsided when you finish. Before adding the new upholstery, you want to remove the old fabric, even the staples. And then wipe down your workstation so the new fabric doesn't get dirty. Start with a straight edge either on the back or the front of the seat. Turn the fabric over the edge and staple it into place, starting in the center and working your way out until you get about two inches from the sides. Now working from the opposite end, pull the fabric over the edge as much as you can, getting all the slack out of the fabric. You want it to fit snug and tight over the cushion. Staple it into place starting from the center and working your way out. Now on the first side, pull gently before stapling. On the last side, tug the fabric as much as you can and staple it. Then cut off the excess fabric around the edges. Now for the corners. I've seen a dozen techniques on how to staple down corners, but I personally have never mastered any of them. And I'm telling you, it ain't that serious. Just do your best to gather the fabric and tuck it under with the least amount of visible folds on top. It might take a few attempts, but it's really that simple. And once you're all done with them, give them a couple coats of Scotch Guard to protect the fabric from stains. We're going to put the seats back in using the same hardware. Secure them with painter's tape, flip the chair over, and screw the cushions back on. And now they're finished. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I have a wealth of DIY ideas that I will be continually sharing on YouTube. And once you're done with your chairs, please go check out Mr. DIY Dork's tutorial on how to sell flip furniture on Craigslist. It's really helpful. I've never seen anybody else go into such great detail on how to do that. You can also check out my Etsy store at roughdraftdiy.etsy.com where I sell a lot of the things that I make in my videos and more. And if you want to follow my daily routine, you can check me out on Instagram at roughdraftdiy. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back next month with another video.